All right, yeah, so here's an easy one. So Didier is asking, is it possible uh, to trail the stop loss with the high line or the, the low line of the Jonchian channel? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Whatever the exact settings are that you're using for the Donchian, it's not really going to matter. So this, this workshop is more about, you know, teaching you guys the concepts of doing things. You know, I, I try not to focus on indicator settings, you know, so to speak, because, you know, indicator settings can be adjusted. It's, you know, I like to focus more on the concept of how you implement something right into our software. So, all right. So let's get, um, let me close that out. So let's get rid of the swings indicator and let's put the Donchian indicator on. All right, so there's the Donchian channel and I'll just use, um, oh, all right, I've got a 15 period here, a 15 period. Actually, I'll just, I think the default's 14 period. And all right, so I've got the low and the high plots on, there we go. All right, so how would we trail this? And, you know, just just for, for for those advanced, you know, users out there, you know, really the Donchian channel is kind of doing the same thing as this swing low and highs, you know, that's kind of built into Blackbird. So just so you guys know that, you know, a lot of times there's sometimes two ways to do the same thing, to get the same outcome. So, um, all right, so let, let's just... Um, Let's, uh, yeah, I'll just start with a custom, a custom stop loss. I'll just start from scratch here. All right, so uh, the initial placement, right? So when we start a stop loss from scratch, um, yeah, let's go, in, we need to go into the initial placement, right? We can see it's at the entry price. Obviously that, that wouldn't, that trade would not last very long. So what we're gonna do is in the initial placement, we're gonna to go to select mode and we wanna use an indicator, right? We're gonna use the Donchian channel indicator. So, all right, so now we can select our indicator. So we're gonna scroll down, select the Donchian channel, and there you go, it's 14 period. Now, right, the Donchian channel has three plots. So now we have to decide, okay, which plot are we using for a long trade? Well, if you're using a, for a long trade, you're probably gonna be using the lower channel, right? And if you're in a short trade, you're gonna be using the upper channel, like so. And if you want, you can add an offset to it, right? So you can go one tick below the lower channel right, or one tick above the upper channel. You know, so again, just, you know, just remember, you can add an offset to this if you want. So, but I'm gonna say no, no offset here. Okay, so that's the initial, that's the initial price, you know, where the stop loss is gonna be placed. Now, if you want to trail, you know, if you want to have your stop loss trail the Donchian channel, Let's go and create, right, a custom trailing rule. And we're just gonna click add, add trailing rule. Let's give this a name here. And we're just gonna jump straight over to the actions. So there's no trigger condition for this. No triggers needed uh, for this type of indicator, right? So we're just gonna go to the action and we're gonna move the stop loss to move to and again we're going to go to the select mode and use an indicator value and we're going to select the Donchian channel again there's the Donchian channel and again select the, the plots All right so again we're going to for a long trade we're going to use the lower channel and so for a short trade we would use the upper channel, right? And then the last thing is, right, we want this, this stop loss to trail continuously. So the repeat needs to be set to indefinitely. 
And there we have it. That's it. Pretty straightforward. So let's click OK. And let me move the market up. And let's make sure there's enough clearance here. There, go long. And there we go. Now it's going to take a while before the um, indicator moves up. Right. And you'll notice here, right, uh, squeeze this a little bit. Right, you'll notice that when we placed the trade, it was on this bar. And so the Donchian channel was actually up here, right? That, so we can see this this bar, two bars back, actually made the low. So the Donchian channel is sitting there, right where the stop loss is at. And, right, the bar that the trade was executed, it made a lower low, but that bar had not closed yet. So the Donchian channel hadn't closed down yet. So you guys got to keep that in mind, right? So that's why there's this gap, you know, between the stop loss and the Donchian channel. Because the Donchian channel was actually up here when the trace was when the trade was being placed. And then after this bar closed, right, it did make a one a, a, it did go a tick lower. So the Donchian channel moved down after this place was being after this trade was being placed. So you just gotta keep that in mind, guys, that when you're using indicators, that the way NinjaTrader functions is you're using the indicator value that existed when the trade was placed, right? You're not going to be using the indicator value that happens after the trade was placed. But more importantly, um, stop losses don't go backwards, right? So the stop loss is not going to move down and go backwards. All right, our stop loss should start moving up here shortly. There we go. One more bar. Now, now we finally have some the Donchian channel moving up, and we have some trailing going there. Okay, there we go. So there we neutralize the trend, and um, let's take a look at the next question. All right. So that was from uh, Didier. So John's question also is about using the Donchian channel indicator. But instead of using the, the low, the upper and lower bands, um, John wants to use the mean here. So let's let's enable the mean here. I'll make that silver. Something like that. Alright, there you go. So John wants to use the mean line to set his stop losses. All right, so when in a short trade, John wants to place his stop loss above the mean line, All right? So we're going to take the mean line and he wants to go, you know, so many ticks above it. All right, so basically he would have a stop loss that's kind of like this, right? So many ticks above the mean line here for a short trade. And then, of course, if... If he's in a long trade, then he wants his stop loss, you know, to kind of be so many ticks below the mean line, right? If he's taking a long, a long trade here, he wants it to be below it, all right? Now, of course, what John is kind of realizing here um, is that what if he takes a counter trend trade, you know, what if he decides to go... Um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, what if he decides to go long down here? So to make this look correct here, uh, let's see, John is using a 10 range. So that's going to widen the Donchian channels out quite a bit. So let's switch over to a 10 range chart. All right, yeah, so that's going to create some wider channels here. So let's say, so the I guess the issue that John's kind of having here you know, and this is, <clears throat> this issue is true 
whenever you're using indicators to set your stop losses, right? Because you, you, there's no guarantee that an indicator will be on the correct side of the market when you go to place a trade, right? That's the that's that's kind of like the one the number one issue that you'll that you'll come across when you have your stop loss trailing indicators is that that indicator might be on the wrong side of the market. You know, so if, if you know, so if we take a, a long trade down here off the bottoms, well, you know, what's going to happen? Well, remember, our stop loss is going to be so many ticks below the mean line, right? So we have the mean line and our stop loss is going to be so many ticks below it. But of course, if you get into a trade, a long trade down here, well, your stop loss is on the wrong side of the market, right? It's on the wrong side of your entry. So that's the problem that is coming across. Yeah. So th this is really easy to solve here. This problem is really easy to solve. So let's open this up. Um, so let's see how I want to approach this. Okay. The way you're, you're going to want to start your stop loss off is you need to use some kind of basic stop loss offset. So either we're going to start with a 10 tick or like an ATR based offset, right? So your initial location for your stop loss has to be in a valid location. And so if we just simply use like a 10 tick or an ATR, right, that'll create a valid stop loss price. So I'll just use 10 ticks for now. And then let's go into the trailing, um, trailing actions here. And let's, we're going to create a custom trailing rule. So we're going to use the add trailing rule button there. And let's give this, um, let's see. All right, so we're going to trail the uh, Donchian mean line um, by eight ticks, All right? So actually, I'll just take the negative off um, by eight ticks. So let's go in, um, right? So so setting up the action is, that's the easy part here. So we're going to move. We want our stop loss to, to follow the mean line. So let's go set that up. So that's an indicator. So we want to use indicator value. And here we already have the Donchian selected. And let's see, I think, um, oh, let's see here. Yeah, so John is using a 20 period. So let's adjust that to 20 period. And he's using the mean line, right? For both long trade and short trade, he's using the mean line. Now, for the offset, so if he's in a long trade, he wants it to be eight ticks below, right? Eight ticks below the mean line. And if he's in a short trend, or I'm sorry, a short trade, he wants it eight ticks above. All right, so the action there is pretty simple. Repeat, well, this is gonna be repeat indefinitely, right? Because he wants his stop loss to continuously trail that mean line, so it's gonna repeat indefinitely. Now, to solve the problem, right? So our, our stop loss is gonna start off, right? With a 10 tick offset from, from the entry price. But then the trailing rule, it'll try and kick in immediately, right? But we don't want that. We need to make sure that um, price has closed on the correct side of the mean line first. And then you can move your stop loss to the mean line, right? So we got to make sure that the market is on the correct side of the mean line. And then the trailing rule can kick in and move that stop loss up to the mean line, right? So we're going to do that with the trigger conditions. And in this case, we're simply comparing price versus an indicator plot, right? Price versus an indicator plot. So input A, yeah. We'll, we'll make sure that the close of the bar, you know, is above the mean line. And then for input B, well, that's going to be our Donchian 
indicator. All right, there's the Dantian channel. Again, let's remember to change it to a 20 period. You know, and I'm also going to have to change the Dantian on my chart to a 20 period as well. Right now it's a 14 period, so I'll change that once I'm done. And we're using the mean line. Yeah, for long trades and short trades, we're using the mean line. All right. And just to be on the safe side, I'm not going to use an offset. Right. So even though right, our stop loss is going to be eight ticks below the mean line, um, just as a um, just to build in a, a safety factor, right? We're going to make sure that the the close of the bar is above the mean line, right? So that'll create like an end to eight tick separation, right, between the close of the bar and where the stop loss wants to trail, right? Where the stop loss wants to be placed. So let's see. So for a long, if we're in a long trade. We want the close to be equal or above the Dantian mean line, right? Yes, yeah, so we want A equal or above B. So that's, that's there we go, all done. Um, and that's it. So John, you were just simply, um, you were just missing this one. Well, you might have been missing two things. Yeah, the first thing that you might have been missing is you need to create a, an initial placement that's valid, right? So I don't know, maybe, maybe you might want your initial placement at the Dantian uh, lower band or channel, I mean, or upper channel. You know, you could do that too. Um, yeah, the lower channel or upper channel should in theory, you know, create a valid price for you. You know, it, it all depends. I mean, if you're trying to pick the, the absolute bottom you know, if you're getting into the trade at absolute bottoms here, then, you know, remember the indicator, you know, you need to look at the closed bar price for the indicator. So, you know, technically, using the Dantian lower channel or upper channels may also create a invalid price for your stop loss. You know, that is possible. It's, it's pr probably unlikely, but it is possible. Um, so maybe let's do something like this here. How about if we, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll adjust our initial placement using the Dantian. So again, let's go 20 period, lower and upper lines. And I'll, you know, we'll say like with a five tick offset or something like that, you know, or a four tick offset, right? So of course, um, you know, this can be adjusted to minimize that stop loss, you know, based on how close your counter trend trades might get, you know, to the Dantian channel, right? So if you're getting into a trade really, really close to the bottom of the channel, you know, then you might, then, you know, you should adjust your offset from that lower channel, you know, as appropriate. All right. So there you go. So this is probably the first thing is make sure that, you know, you're at least placing your stop loss in a in a valid and safe location or safe price. Right. And then the second thing that you probably needed, John, was this trigger condition. Right. And to make sure that the close of the bar is on the correct side of the Dantian mean line. So let's go take this for uh, a test drive. So let me move the market up here. All right, th these are 10 range bars now, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to get price up here. All right, there, so let's take a short trade and can I pull it down? Oh, just in time. All right, so there you go. I took a short trade, and right, so price was slightly above the Dantian channel, but I just barely had enough room to get that stop loss placed in there. All right. 
All right, so now we just need to wait for, yeah, it looks like after this bar closes, it looks like the, the mean line is gonna be above the closing price, and so that should pull our stop loss down um, immediately. Or that, that will allow the trailing rule to kick in. And let's see. Oh, sorry guys, my mistake. Let's see if I can change this without the strategy reloading. So keep in mind, you should not do this. Normally, if you go and change your indicator settings, it normally forces a reload on the chart. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But it's you never want to do anything that's going to reload the chart while you have a position open. Right? It's just it's just bad practice all right, to do that. Um, so but let's see what happens. Ah, there we go. Cool. All right. So I got lucky there. I got really lucky. It didn't. It didn't force the ch whole chart to reload. So my so Blackbird, you know, didn't stop and start again. All right. So anyway, so there's a 20 period Donchian channel. So we've got a ways to go here. Let me pull this market down. Yeah, we've got a ways to go before we cross that mean line. There we go. So as soon, as soon as I look back over, we can see that, um, yep, as soon as the bar closed on the correct side of the mean line, our stop loss got pulled down. And I don't, I think this mean line is probably going to stay flat for quite a while. Um, actually, the mean line is going, it's going up. So yeah, so our stop loss isn't going to move. So remember, stop losses by default do not move backwards. So even though the mean line is moving up, our stop loss is not going to move up. It's not going to move backwards. Right. But as soon as the mean line starts moving down and going with the trade, then our stop loss will start coming down, you know, with the mean line. Yeah, so we can see the mean line's still going down. Or, I'm sorry, the mean line's still going up. Sorry, this cold that I'm starting to catch here. Already messing with my head. There we go. Okay, so now the mean line is starting to go down. So probably after this next bar, the mean line will go down enough that it that the trailing can start can start trailing down as well. There we go. And this stop loss just moved down. Alright. So there we have it.